Hey guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Bitbucket. Bitbucket is a web-based version control repository hosting service owned by Atlassian, which gives teams one place to plan projects, collaborate on code, test and deploy all with free private Git repositories. After going through this tutorial, I promise you that the concept and understanding of the Bitbucket will be absolutely clear to you. But before we begin, let me inform you a few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platform which offers DevOps, Cloud and Containers Technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. You can join our all training programs globally through online platforms and if you are looking for classroom workshop then we have regular batches available in Hyderabad and Bangalore. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. Okay, so first thing uh, uh, we are going to discuss now is what each bit bucket. So before understanding the bit bucket, uh, the prerequisite for this training is Git. So okay. if you know Git very well, uh, then it's very easy to understand bit bucket. I'm assuming okay. right now is like your fundamental knowledge of Git, how it works, and all stuff like that. With that assumptions, I'm going to talk about what is a bit bucket. So bit bucket is a basically registry. Okay, so Bitbucket is a registry, and now for what? For Git repository. So that means that means you can have uh, you can manage thousands of Git repository. at this place okay it also give you very rich ui okay rich ui to interact with git repository it also has a role based authentication and authorization of feature and it also has a ability to manage the different organization organization management it also has a wiki integration wiki pages also you can use it it also has an issue tracking tool tracking tool okay so many features what we have now this tool is developed by developed by Atlassian okay. and this is developed in Java so this is the kind of things again here when I say in terms of release here you have a two kind of release one is a cloud-based and one is like a hosted solution. So here cloud based, which is you can find it. At Bitbucket. Dot org which is the cloud based so can you see my screen uh, and yes sir yes i can see your screen sir <laughs> and you can install in the existing server okay okay so this is the 
small introduction about Bitbucket. Now, what are the other tools which we have available for this category? If let's say if not Bitbucket. So we have so many tools such as GitHub Enterprise. We have a GitLab also. Yeah. And we have a get it also. So many other tools are also available. Now, next question is how to install Bitbucket Enterprise. Bitbucket hosted. So now I am going to install directly through the demo. So let me show you. So you will go for the Bitbucket installation document sir uh, one more thing uh, before going in uh, difference between a big bucket and a jet uh, get is basically like yeah. uh, it also has got a repository uh, bit packet is also has got a uh, can meet in their own repository right and it can also interface with git for version control uh, for yeah. uh, mercator for version control uh, it can uh, jet can also create workflows uh, here also you can create workflows, right? So what's the page? But Bitbucket can handle thousands of Git repository. That is what the difference. Ah uh, no. Uh, if you see that Bitbucket and GitHub both have a similar feature, and yes. there's no much of the difference because all the feature what you have on GitHub, you will find on Bitbucket. Uh, there's only one thing which I see here is like uh, GitHub is very popular because github got introduced in the market before bitbucket yes so many people are comfortable navigating the ui of github comparing to bitbucket but yes in terms of feature i don't find much of the difference yes uh, i have not got time to evaluate each and every feature but i have used both of it, both of these and you can work on this without any problem Okay, okay, yeah. fine. So now I'm going to install the bit bucket. So if you go to the bit bucket server installation document, which you can find it, it just like this. I open up through Google. Here it is. Yeah. Let it get open. So now you see here, uh, there are some of the supported platform information you can find it here. And if you look at this here, you install in Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Anywhere you can install the bit bucket. And the reason is very simple because it's developed in Java. So here you can install through as a zip and archive. Here you can install using the installer of Linux and Windows. And here you can install through Docker also. And here I think you probably have tried Bitbucket and AWS. So these, these are the yeah. things which you have it. You can install in the data centers also. Now there are so many variants are there. These are the requirements for the Bitbucket. You should be having at least two CPU and the three GB RAM. So these are the minimum requirement, hardware requirement, operating system, storage, and all stuff like that. These are the things. Now here. Uh, in terms of prerequisite, you need to have a, a Java 8 and Java 11. These two are supported. Java 9 and Java 10 is not supported. Database, yes, these are the. Uh, if I go for the inbuilt database, I'll get the Postgres, but uh, you can use any of this uh, database we, you can see here. MySQL so Server, so MySQL 
Sorry, sir. Both those the crushes was. You sir, can use Oracle second. here. Sir, one second. Does a Postgres used to store metadata of the Bitbucket server? Ah uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Ah uh, yes. Users' information, wiki, wiki knowledge, issue tracking. So the code will go into the repository, but uh, remaining information such as uh, users' access, uh, meta information, uh, pages yeah. information like which you feed, uh, data which you feed through issue tracking tool. And all this thing will go to the database. Okay. Okay. So you see here all the database which is supported here. All the RDMS uh, H2 is also supported, and okay. H2 you will get it only for the evaluation purpose. So when you start the trial version of Bitbucket, you will get the H2 database also. So these are the database. So now I'm going to get started. So I will start with one virtual machines. Let me log in. I did it a similar way. So I also went to EC2 and uh, uh, choose and uh, launch an instance. And then I uh, went to the machine and I yeah. uh, type attach and bit packet and went to the um, community AMI and choose the uh, uh, 621 version. And I installed it. Yeah, but I'm not using the community AMIs. I will have a, a installer. Which is given by Bitbucket. I will show you that. Okay, sure. No problem. So, what's the difference between this? Uh, is that the same or is it different? Uh, there's no much of the difference, but if you do this way because you are going to learn admin side, so you'll get a control over the installation uh, procedure. So, at least you get a little bit of more idea about how this installation. AMI, everything is configured, so that's the only okay. difference. Okay. So I am going to show you with RHL 7.5.
Okay, so I'll go for the two CPU, four GB RAM. Okay, one machine. So you choose RHL seven point five from. Uh, uh, I'll go for marketplace. Yeah, I'll I yes. I oh, know it's there in the quick start guy. Okay, so now it's a bit bucket. And here I am opening up all the ports through the firewall security groups. Though okay. Bitbucket runs on 799, something like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. 80 port number, 433 port number, and then uh, 7999 port number. So you provided uh, two CPUs and four GB RAM, right? So are you there? Hello? Hello?
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Could you ever hear me, sir? Okay, I think that I lost, I lost the internet for some time. Now I got no it problem. back. No okay. Issues. Okay, so. Okay, so. But I'm not able to see your screen, sir. Can you share your screen? Yeah, just. Okay, so can you see now? Yes, sir. So what is the storage capacity you gave, sir? Okay, so this is my IP address. Okay. I gave 250 GB is for the testing purpose. Okay. Uh, depends on the requirements, you can go for more. Okay. So now I am going to use this machine. So I'm going to SSH this machine. So let me SSH. Okay, ISSH, I'll become a root. Now I am going to install JDK 8. Okay, so open JDK 8. I just type in the Google. I go here. And here I am going to install open JDK 8. So Change the package name. Is being installed. Now, same time, I will finalize which particular uh, version I am going to use. So, if you see here, server trial, you can use it here. You can install that installer. So I think we will go with this one. Uh, this is for the trial. And all these things. So I'll go with this. Click on it. And here. For Linux, I have installer. Which is here. So I'm going to download the installer. Through this URL. And it said for the 30 days trial period, I'm going to create it. Now it's for Linux. So I'll go for the Linux and click on submit button. Now this has started downloading, but I am pausing this at the same time. I am going to get the URL. So for the URL, I will open up download button. And this is the URL I'm going to copy. Now this is the bin file which I'm going to download. So here I'll go to the OPT directory. 
uh, by the way my open jdk is being still installed because i forgot to mention the yes now i'll go to the opt here using wget i will download the package so wget might not be installed so i'm going to install the wget and finally using this wget i'm going to download the package so package is wget and this is the package exact url here it is so this is the linux installation installer which i have got it i have to give the executable permission to this file i gave it and now i have to execute this i am executing it uh, i see that here it says unsatisfied requirement so you have to before installing this bit bucket you have to have a git installed in this machine so control c i don't want to continue this installation that means prerequisite you have to install so if you see yum install git hyphen y i'm updating it so i'm installing the git now installation of the git is done then i'm installing the installer installing this installer and it says again unsatisfied requirement for the git so if you look at this the version of the git which i have it which is not satisfying for the bitbucket so control c again no i don't want to install it bitbucket i will go and upgrade the git now the question is how to upgrade the git so this tutorial i have it on here how to upgrade the git so by default you get the older version of it but you want to upgrade it so you can follow this process and upgrade the git so i am following up so this upgrade process is only work in the rhl 7.5 for the different different platform like ubuntu you will have to have a different process for it so i'm upgrading the git Uh, I'm upgrading the Git with 2.9.5, which is okay for there's some issues actually. I see. Okay, so now I'm going to 
compile the git from scratch Okay, final, finally this upgrade command. And now if I see git version, it's see still it's up to not date. Okay, you have to set this right. It's not set. Now it's got updated. Now Git is there, up to date version. Now I'm going to install that class. <coughs> so here it says, and here I see unsupported Git version. Okay, so I see the 1.2.9. Let me check. There is a problem here. Okay, so the requirement for the Git is changed is 2.09. It's required 2.12. So I need to do something here and that is yum update. So that's a
it's almost done okay so i'm this time i'm downloading the latest version 2.12 or something like that 2.21 Okay. When I installed with the uh, uh, Atlassian Bitbucket server from the marketplace uh, community, it was using JIT as 2.14. 2.14. Point? Yeah, so that is under the support list. I, I see here. Uh, so here, if you see. Yeah. 2.1 point these are then support list mine is outdated yes so that is a problem so i am going to untar xvf zxvf and 2. Point latest one now i will go inside this one and finally same command i will run it and that is this one
this one. Finally, I will run again one more time. This one and then get version 2.1. So that's done. Now I'm going to install the Rubin file. So let's use this. Now, yes, so here it says, if you want to install a new instance or you want to upgrade an existing instance. So here be mindful of, mindful about it. When you are upgrading the bit bucket, you have to use the same uh, package which you are using and then you will be prompted whether you want to upgrade or install. So during the upgrade, you will select the two option. Option number two, here I'm installing the new version. So I will select one enter. Here they're asking uh, you. So here you are installing the version of uh, 6.10.1. So you want to install as a server instance or data search data center instance or smart mirroring uh, instance. So this is uh, something which you have to take a decisions. Uh, but here we are going for the server instance so one and uh, you have to select which particular directory structure where you would like to install so here uh, default installation for all the atlassian product is under opt atlassian so that is where that opt atlassian bitbucket if you want to customize it you can do that but for time being i'm okay with it now data directory where the application data will be stored uh, is the default location if you want to change it for the uh, high availabilities and then for backup and restore process you can change it but i will go with this var atlassian so remember opt atlassian is a place where you have a product installed uh, var atlassian a place where you have a data for the bit bucket uh, stored so be mindful about it now which port uh, you would like uh, this to open up so here 79990 so this is a port now you want to install as a service of course yes and uh, one second sir so one second sir uh, when you when you start installation you say you, need this, you want a bit bucket server or a bit bucket data center and uh, the third option is uh, uh, three options are the right right the data center doesn't bring bit bucket server and data center yeah, and smart Yeah. What's the difference? Just again, I'll put it here. So here you got the three options. Here. Server instance means uh, here you are getting the only one instance of Bitbucket. When you go for okay. the data center instance, uh, that lots of high availability instance configuration will come where you can select okay HA options um, load balancers and many things actually if you want the mirroring instance that means you are trying to mirror someone let's say there's one server in uh, uh, USA and you want to mirror it so that uh, server instance you want to install for that so this is a, something like this here okay Okay. Okay. So your smart mirroring is like uh, you can mirror the uh, or clone the JIT more faster by. So now it's asking, do you want to? Uh, yeah. So you can mirror one bit bucket so using that option. Okay. So are we configuring? Uh, yeah. So now it is asking, system? would you like to launch the bit bucket basically? Yes, sir. Sorry. Uh, no, I have I have not configured the Postgres. I will teach you how to configure the Postgres because the trial version and trial version runs with H2 database. But if you want to change the different database, it is possible. I'll show you that place where it can be done. Okay, so H2 it's not on, it's automatically configured by the uh, installation itself. So we don't have to do anything on H2 configuration. No, you didn't. I did not have to do anything. Okay, okay. Yeah. Fine. So you have to remember this one installation directory is opt atlassian and home directory for the data var atlassian application data http port is 7990 
and okay. i am installing starting the services so now service is being started and 7990 uh, a place where it will get started so bit bucket service is being started now so when i when i uh, when i looked into the uh, big bucket data center uh, uh, i just i just thought of uh, trying it out how to install it so when i installed uh, through azure or somewhere else they were asking about uh, how do you configure uh, the um, what do you say uh, elastic search uh, how you configure the uh, mail servers and then uh, they talking about uh, uh, number of uh, uh, servers you want uh, yes Number of yes. servers for MCA and all stuff like that. Yeah. Elasticsearch so elastic search for the uh, uh, the lots search. uh, searching indexing and all. So okay. lots of stuff will be there on that. Place. But okay. generally uh, uh, in the in the market, generally in the market, will they go for uh, data center uh, implementation more? Uh, Probably, uh... Uh, no, no. Uh, basically, for your project, the one which we are trying right now, that's the one. So the data center who wants to service, uh, get registry service for their millions of clients, for them it is good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. So. Yeah. So I got this here. Port number is seven nine nine zero, and I'm trying to access it here. Now here it's being asked whether you want the internal data uh, for the demo purpose database or here external. Here you can select that which database you want. Here you want the Postgres, Oracle, MySQL, MS SQL. So here you can select that. I, I was as of now because what you have to do if you want to go for the internal data external database then make sure that the database is set up much in advance and you should be having four information one is like what is the external database host address port number username password and database name so these are the five information you need it uh, in case of you want to store the uh, you want to store the data in the external database but we are just learning purpose so we'll go for the internal again if you go for the internal and if you want to change later point of the time that is also possible so there is a configuration file for the bit bucket which is located and uh, located at the atlassian dot uh, location uh, here atlassian here it will be created under the bit bucket okay here and you can change it so that file has not come so far but it will come somewhere let's say i think app location it will come so i'll just check it out after the creating so uh, let me just do that so now it's initializing this too this is my things i got the license i need to license uh, evaluation license so for that i need to go to uh, atlassian.net and then get the a trial license so i have a, a accounts already created so using that i will go and get the uh, atlassian trial license for bitbucket you see that it has gone to my atlassian.com and i am going to get for the bitbucket server a license so i select this generate a license for my server id I got this license. Click yes, and finally, this license for will be active for 30 days. Next, and this is where we are going to set up the username. So let's use it Rajesh. Uh, full name Rajesh Kumar. Email ID DevOps at the rate of Rajesh Kumar. Dot X Y Z. DevOps one two three. DevOps one two three, and here if you want to integrate your Bitbucket with Jira, you can do it right away or directly go 
to the Bitbucket. Can you do it later? Yes. Anytime you can come back and integrate with the Jira with Bitbucket, that is possible. Not only with Jira, many other tools we can integrate. So I have decided to go to the Bitbucket alone. And then my username is a DevOps and password is DevOps123. And yeah, one second, sir. Yeah, if you normally Jira is for uh, issue tracking uh, product, right? Uh, and also bug tracking and uh, agile project management. For but issue tracking can be done with Bitbucket also, right? Ah, uh, yes. So in Jira, uh, there is a advanced version of issue tracking. Tracking uh, functionalities are there, such as you okay. can manage the issue tracking, a uh, task management, bug management, Scrum management, project management. Uh, Kanban management, so uh, agile and stuff like that. So it's advanced features are there on Jira. But if you want the basic issue tracking for the each project in your Bitbucket, then that is inbuilt functionality you have on Bitbucket. Okay. Okay. So now the the Bitbucket is ready. My server instance is ready. So it's running with uh, H2 database for the evaluation purpose. My username is Rajesh and password is DevOps123. Now what need to be done? So after the setup is done, what do you need to do? You need to configure. So I'll put it in the step so that way you remember. So step one, configure bit bucket. This is the first time activities which will be done by admin. Okay, so what are the things you're going to configure? So you are going to configure such some of the information such as mail server. Okay. You are going to configure organization. You are going to configure projects. You are going to configure access. Okay. Authentication. And authorization. So this is the one time activities which you have to do that. So authentications and authorization authorization okay so let's start doing it and uh, other options also you can check it out so where do we set it up all this stuff so you have to go to this one button you see the setting button okay so first time when you configure the bit bucket you are a super admin you go to this place and do the configuration so here you have a lot of options you see here a lot of options are here okay not everything you have to go now okay go with a limited you see here mail server okay so you have to set up the mail server it says no email server is configured notification will not be sent so this is the prerequisite you have to set up the mail server okay here it is now second thing you have to set up if you want to use for the production database you can configure it database here so click on the database and configure so you can uh, set up a migration and all stuff like that so you can see here migrate database here you can do that and start migration so all these are you can do all this stuff through the command line i mean the through files also uh, through utilities but this is much easier for you you can test it also and you want to migrate to some other database let's say mysql ms equal oracle you give all these five information and start migrating this is a typically you will do after the uh, evaluation is over now uh, here mail server you want to set it up here you have to give the uh, host name port name username and password so this this you get it, get it typically from your it team so these are the prerequisite you have to set it up mail server uh, database if you want it and uh, stuff like that so these are the things so this is the first thing you have to do now second thing which you have to do is you have to go and set the authentication and authorization so authentication means what how to log in bitbucket that is the first question how to log in bitbucket typically by default if you look at this password based thing is enabled in bitbucket password based thing is enabled where to see it Go to the authentication which is here. You see here authentication. And here this is the password based authentication. Now how to select. So here if you go to the user directories. 
and here you see the one which is coming with an internal so this internal basically this internal is a password based okay password based authentication let's say you don't want the password based you want to activate the activate directory or ldap and stuff like that also multiple can be possible so here you have to click on the add directory you have to discuss with your uh, it team and get their ldap and active directory details and if you have this you see ldap microsoft active directory internal with active ldap authentication cloud also and at, at jira also can be used let's say you have if you have existing jira at uh, that database also can be used to authenticate the bitbucket so typically you will go for the ldap and stuff like that click next and you fill this information test it and then automatically it will get activated so this is the way the second uh, step you will do after the setting of the mail server you will set up a authentication how to log in bitbucket so you have to enable this one then after that it comes for authorization authorization means who is supposed to do what 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 is the access you have what is the access you have okay that is called as a authorization what you are supposed to do what you are authorized to do so that those things is decided in the these area here you have to select users here you have to select groups here you have to select the global permission okay see here global permission okay so these are the three things using that you can decide the who should be doing what so now let's start doing it so here i am going to uh, start here the activities such as let's say you want first of all group to be there so now let me create a one group here i'm creating a group and this is a dev group i'm creating okay and here i'll be creating one more group i created a dev group i have not added any users of it or do it and i'll create one more group this is a qa group let's say qa group i created a one more group so two groups i created now i'm going to create a few users of it so i have one user which is me super admin but i'm creating user by the way if you want to create a user anonymized users also it can be possible so i'm creating a normal user so user is a dev1 full name dev1 dev1 at the rate of uh, dev1.com and dev1 password 123 dev1 1123 and then created a user so i created one user which is a dev user i'm going to create one more user back to user back to user and here qa1 at the rate of qa1.com qa1 123 qa1 123 and created a user there's something is match QA one one two three QA one one two three. Done. So guys, here you got the multiple users also two users. So here I created a group. Here I created a users. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to add these users into the group. So let me do that. Dev I am going to add into the group called Dev. by the by the way stash users was the default group which is already added that's a default group added so now i added a dev1 into the dev group and then qa into the qa1 group qa group so this is the way you manage the authentic authorization now i manage this is the way i manage the large number of users and groups you can have this users and groups finally i have to give the access to dev and qa so you can individually access given to the users also 
but I prefer typically through the groups so that way it's easy to manage. So you set the at one label rather than for each user. So though you can give the access to the users also, such as Rajesh Kumar has been added as admin and project creator, system admin and all. So these are the roles which you have it uh, created by uh, Bitbucket. So I am going to add a user dev and dev what kind of access you want to give it. So you want to give it access, let's say dev select okay and what kind of access you want to give so here you have a user creator admin system admin. so let's say i'll give a let's say project creator or something like that have an ad and here way i'll give only access to the as a bit pocket user so this is the way so this is the way you can add a pro, uh, users groups and assign a groups a permission in the permission which consists of system admin admin project creator and project uh, bitbucket user now the question is what is a bitbucket user so bitbucket user will be doing able to commit read write and all this stuff creator will be able to create a project in bitbucket admin will be doing lots of admin work include the permissions user group repository management and stuff like that a system admin will be like everything uh, complete uh, super super user of it now this system admin admin project creator and bitbucket these settings you will find it also in a place which is somewhere uh, i should be able to find it just again uh, the place which is called global permission okay so no this is there one more thing authentication there. is there any permission or something okay seems like that option is gone there was one permission here loader version okay no problem so yes so this is the way you can decide who should be authenticated and who should be authorized and with what so now this is the stuff which you can do that though you can uh, if you want to enable the ssos, SSOs also single sign on that is also possible and using this place you can enable it single sign on using crowd is supported for time being okay so this is also possible so uh, rajesh do you have any question here yeah i have a question uh, yeah. when you give a global permission on a user there's a system admin admin project creator so what's the difference between system yeah. admin and admin privileges what are the difference in privileges okay so here system admin i uh, if i look uh, if i tell you in the simple way so here system admin uh, will do the will be able to add the admin and now admin will be able to see administrator all these things he'll be able to add a new user administrator permissions uh, change general application setting administrator will have a full access to all the project and repository whereas here you'll be having access to all the so typically what you can do is uh, let's say you have a bit bucket for the project and uh, this not one project you are managing let's say you are managing five or ten projects so you can have a one ten admins each of the projects will have a ten admin so that way you can uh, manage it uh, admin and here super yeah, admin will be yeah, yeah. yeah once again uh, can you go to the add user and type dev one just type above rajesh kumar dev one uh, you choose it add it add add Want, you want me to add a user? Uh, no, no, right now, say add button is there, right? Add it. Add, add. No. So, you want me to add yes. as a user? No, yeah, add the global permission. Just add it, yeah. Just yeah, add, you have just to add the role. Role. No, just add it, no, add it, just add it, yeah. And now you can select the role, right? Yeah. Pico, so here, Pico, 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 you can select the role. No, so here what you are doing, you are you have added a user. You initially you had decided what you want, and after yeah. that adding you want to change this guy, then you can change this guy. Okay. Got it? Yeah, got it. Yeah. So by default, I added here. Let's say if you decide system admin, automatically will become a system admin like this. So system admin will be uh, will have access to manage the admins. Admins will have access to manage project creator and many more. So if you, yeah, if you read a little bit of it, this one, yeah. it'll work out. Yeah. Okay. So here, this is the initial setup. Once you set up the first time, 
and it's a one time setup actually not too many times actually. so here configuring system so that is done configuring system now if you go you look at the more options so user is done group is done global permission is done authentication is done user directory is done so these are the first time activities now if you want to do mail server this is here you can do that uh, database migration here you can do that now if you want to set up a https and ssh stuff so you can set it up in the server setting this is also one time activity uh, so this is important so you select here if your uh, url should be open with http or https it should be enable https http or whatever whatever exactly all these certificates you can see the port here ssh base url you can select here uh, this is the elastic search for the indexing and uh, uh, indexing and uh, searches and all typically search is powered uh, in a bit bucket uh, using elastic search so uh, so by default if you if you uh, if you if you check out the check out the process by default your elastic search will be running uh, along with uh, along with um, just again uh, your uh, bit bucket so yeah here, here if you see i'm logged into the bit bucket server one more time and ps hyphen eaf grep elastic see elastic search is running here yeah. and elastic search is running if you look at this elastic search is running using what user so if you see this is the user which is running elastic search at bit bucket plus something like that so yes elastic search you cannot run as a root user that's the problem so this is elastic search which is running on this and this is helping a uh, bit bucket to uh, give you the faster search results indexing storing the index data and stuff like that and this is the elastic search username and password and for that okay now, uh, this, is, LFS, this is for the one second this is for elastic search which bit bucket uh, user when we search uh, uh thing in the repository or it is being used by admin to search in the log uh no 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 uh this elastic search is not the log for the for the for the for the uh application bit bucket application this elastic search it is for the search which you do on the bit bucket software like here yeah, is yeah, the software searching for pod code commits and repository this elastic search for that if you want to okay. set up a elastic search for the log management then you have to separate location you have to set it up and then locate the yeah, logs yeah, uh yeah so that is a different now here uh, you can also see that one option is there git lfs enabled what is the git lfs remember git for the source code management and git lfs git lfs means a large file system for the binaries so typically we do not store binaries in the git repository so if you want to use bit bucket for the storing the binaries repositories also then you have like to audio video repository. yeah like audio video and other kind of things right we use yeah, images digital. images binaries exes file uh, jar files and stuff like that yeah okay so these are the basic setup once you have to do it and then you are good to go with so in setting if you look at this uh, uh, first time you have to set it up all this stuff and uh, uh, here mail server you have to set it up uh, database you have to set it up server settings you have to set it up and all this thing these, these all are one time activities and uh, then you start using it now if you see here add ons and here it says find new maps apps manage apps hit chat integration so the, what what is this add on so add ons means uh if you want to uh in if you want to add additional features on bit bucket and which is not available so then you will get a help from add ons so here you can find a new add ons add ons typically we used to call it plugins add ons uh, extensions components whatever you want know, to call it different different tools different different terminologies what you have in bit bucket world we call it add ons so where do you find the add ons and so you can find the new add ons and install it most of the add ons though it will be paid but you can uh, get it available on the trial period i mean trial version see your pre trial free trial free trial so all this feature which you used to want it you can install it use it and then uh, it will help you to in you know 
give you the better experience on the bit bucket so these all are you see some of these are free also some of these are free though you have a very limited one okay so you see this is a free so you can install this here after installing this add-ons you have to configure it and then start using it let me tell you here huge cases for the add-ons are different so you have to read the documentation and uh, this is see this is the documentation after installing this free add-ons i got it so you have to read their documentation to understand how to use it and how to you know configure it and stuff like that so there is no one uh, method which you i can tell you okay this add-ons or all the add-ons you can configure using that so yeah see here they have given a videos and lots of documents you have to read it and use it to stop so yes add-ons is a great way to add a, a, a customized features if you want it uh, hip chat integration you can find it here uh, why hip chat here uh, is there basically uh, hip chat is a, a chatting uh, tool application uh, so if you want to integrate hip chat at uh, a bit bucket you have to click on it and you have to give the all the hip chat configuration server details and stuff like that now the question is what is a hip chat so hip chat is a chatting uh, application but developed by atlassian and that's one of the reason they have incorporated here so you have to configure it once and so once you are configured you can use this functionality as well now some of the commit policies are here commit policies like every commit which you do on the github uh, this is the basically this i install the free add-ons so you have to configure it uh, all these options are here you see here uh, all these options you have to go through that learn each uh, each uh, uh, add-ons which you installed it and then configure it correctly now i'm not going into the right now clustering and mirrorings and stuff like that and uh, but here you you should see here uh, if you want to reach out to the bitbucket uh, support team uh, you can click these items and here you can uh, create a bundle of information which you are of your bitbucket and you can send it to the support team uh, for the you know uh, further support for any issues whichever you got it so overall yes users a place where we can create a users group group global permission assign a users access to the groups and uh, uh, to the users and groups authentication will allow you to enable the authentications user directories where you can add ldap active directories and stuff like that add on section where you can install and install manage configure the additional functionalities of the bitbucket server settings basic configuration database you know that mail server smtp servers licensing not needed right now because 30 day license thing i'm using it for time being so overall these are the features of admin we will be doing it yes uh, we will discuss uh, the clustering mirroring these are the advanced feature in the next session but after this setting up this uh, bit bucket we have to use it so step number 2 i have to go and use it so right now i have to go and start using it so how to use it so let's forget about this admin session now let's talk about the being uh, let's talk forget about the super admin section let's talk about the project creator or administrator admin there were two more roles which was given so let's start uh, acting like this so uh, uh, let's we'll start working with it so now here you have it uh, bit bucket let it come there is a project add a users i have already added users i have to create a project so let's create a project so i am creating a project one and here and create a project here it is now you want to create import a repository or create a repository so here you click and you can create a repository here also you can create a repository here also so many options are there here you can import it here you can see the list of repository right now none here you can see the project setting so you have created only one projects one projects and here you have a repository so here create a repository 
done create a repository uh, sorry not done repo one description of it created a repository now you have to work this is a code commit and stuff like that you have to do that okay so this is the empty repository you got this here now you want to clone it right now you can clone it here okay so ssh is not configured that's the reason ssh is not enabled right now you can use http so you want to clone it let me work with this repository so mkdir bit bucket go to the bit and git is there so clone it what is the username my username is rajesh password is devops one two three authentication failed so did i try wrong username is rajesh devops one two three yeah so i got this repository repo one now what are you going to do so now you become a developer so i'm becoming a developer so let's uh this is the repository i have cloned it empty repository i'll create some source code here using the touch command file one file two file three here git add and here you have to configure your name config user dot name dot 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 git config user dot email this is the git stuff not bit bucket stuff and git commit iphone m and git push horizon master that's all so now as a developer i committed now go and refresh this and here you have such a intuitive project you see here here you have a project look at this source source code you want to see the commit these are the branches these are the tags here you have compare copy branch name check out the source tree the blah blah so many you can download also and so many features again you get a clone option you here you have it create a branch you can create a more branch through gui so many features you get it here okay here you can pull request fork you can do that here and repository setting you can do that here also see again in the each repository you can configure so many options you have branch permissions access keys branching a model hooks for this repository so these are the repository based uh, features which we have i'm just showing you the overview of it okay so and project setting so you have to remember two options after this one is project setting which is here see here this is a project setting so each project you create you will have a certain settings okay which includes project permissions branch permission access keys logs branching model hooks and these other things now project permission you want to add a few people to this project so let's say there is a see here right now default is no permission given because i am a super access i am a super user so i have got the every access and here this is not a uh, uh, public uh, repositories so this project is not to public so here you can select what is the default permission write or read none so none so whom you want to give access so let's say you want to give access to dev select the group called dev here what kind of access you want to give it read or write or admin so i'll go for the write and add it here i'll go for the qa here and here i'll give read access add it so now i give the permissions this is the project permissions though you can give the permission at the repository level also 
again i'm repeating you can give the permission at the repository level also branching permission you can also assign here add a permission so there's no branching permission so add a permission to this now which branch name you want to so right now i have only one branch master and what kind of access you want to give so you want to give these are the actions branch name so master okay restriction you want to master branch you want to prevent prevent all the changes to some particular user or group or prevent deletion prevent rewriting history prevent uh, changes without this one so here what do you want so let's say you want only the deletion right now master branch should not be deleted by dev done and create so this way you can add the branch permission also access keys you can upload the access key here so remember in git uh, how do you interact with the repository there is a two way <coughs> ssh using the keys so you have to upload your public keys here or http using the password use the write-in password and i have used the password and all so here you can upload your public key and use that to access that all the repository of this particular project though you can assign the keys at the uh, repository level also so the working models here you have it okay what do you want these are the branch prefixes and all these are the practices which you can uh, so one second out. one second sir. so one second if you go to access so one second just one second sir uh, if you go to access keys uh, just say add key okay so when you create a vm with uh, ec2 instance you will have a ppm file uh, with putty gen you can create a uh, ppk file right so that uh, key you uh, the key you can attach it here and then access through ssh okay so if you are using windows uh, then you have to use the putty gen to generate top yeah. key, key pair we call it. key pair yeah. yeah key pair will give you one private key and one public key remember yeah. you have to add here public key not a private key now let's say if you are using mac and uh, linux then the command to create a public key pair public and private key pair is ssh hyphen keygen so ultimately no matter how you create a keys but you have to upload the keys here and only the public key will be allowed now typically where to find out the public key in your user home dot ssh id underscore dot pub underscore sa dot pub is your public key okay so content of the public key you use the cat more or some editors like notepad or notepad plus plus you copy the content of it and you store it make sure that while copying it should be one liner only else it will not accept okay okay so here you have yeah. a hooks in the yeah. web hooks you can add uh, hooks basically help you to do some global operation like when commit happened to the repository push happened to the repository or someone update some uh, uh, ids or uh, uh, user id and to the repository so what will what should happen so hooks is the things which will get trigger when some events occur in your code or in your repository so, so this is the way you can do that will you show labs on hooks sir is that possible uh yes uh, for the hooks you have to okay so hooks uh, you can do integration with uh, jira actually or let's say uh, hooks you can try with uh jit itself right it's like uh pre uh, commit post commit uh, no, you can that's see not, it in the hooks no 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 that the hooks which you are talking about that is for your local repository here this yeah. hooks which you see this is for the repository which is on github so i am thinking how simple way i can show you a hooks so you can think about this one let me explain it to you 
So one of the scenario which I have used it is this is a Jenkins. Do you know Jenkins, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this is the this is you developer. Yeah. And this is a bit bucket. So what you want to write is the moment user push the changes here. So push is basically uh, so one hooks will get trigger here. Something like uh, see here. these are the hooks has been uh, written. You can create a more hooks actually using the add hooks here. Okay, so you can add a more hooks here. Okay, so they are asking to add a hooks uh, through the all the plugins actually. So that's bad actually. Uh, but anyways, so you can add a hooks here. Some of the hooks reject force push, which is installed. Verify commit signature. It's installed free of cost. Verify committer. That committer should be having the user accounts here. That is installed. So these are the things you can configure it for time being. But I was talking something here. So you have to install some of the hooks here. So the moment code is pushed here, bit bucket will trigger this job on push. So that hooks also you can try to find it out. So let me search the Jenkins. And here you have it. Though it's a paid one. You can get this functionality. See here, we have hooked to Jenkins for Bitbucket. So here, when you commit the code or push the code, pull the code, merge the code, whatever it is, this uh, Jenkins will start building it because Bitbucket will call that Jenkins. So something like that, you can configure it. Again, in order to use this uh, uh, this uh, hooks, you have to follow their documentation. Uh, I have written this documentation long back. I am not sure whether it's still relevant or not, but I can show you this. Probably you can follow later point of the time. The tutorials is in devopschool.com slash tutorial slash Jenkins and uh, bit bucket. So here. Continuous integration with other tools, not this one. Uh, do you see the trigger option somewhere here? Yeah, schedule and trigger Jenkins job button. Yeah. So here you have so many options, but I am looking for the bit bucket. So this article will help you. I am not validated this since 2017. Uh, uh, but yes, again, please follow. And I think not much of the changes should be there, and it should work. So check it out if it work. Uh, if it's not working, then I will see, just drop me an email. I'll just update this stuff with the right information. Okay. So now uh, I was talking about this uh, project-related specific changes. So here you have all the stuff. Okay, there are a few more things are there, but it will be you can use it only if you have uh, expertise in the working with the Git. So those merging strategies, merge checks, and all stuff like that we'll talk about a little later. But okay. this is the project setting which you have. Now you can go for the repo settings also. You will find similar setting actually. So you go to the setting option. You see. Whatever you had in the project setting, you will find in the repository setting also. So yes, project setting. If you do all the repository, which will, which will, which is a part of the project, will have the same setting. But you can override at the repository setting options, and again you can check it out. Again, you should check it out this option, uh, uh, which you get it along with it. So to repository, clone, create branches, pull request, poking, comparison source code commits branches pull request folks and repository settings so all these thing options which you have it now here you must be wondering there's one thing which i did discuss about is organization management okay 
so here i do not see organization so that options you will not see at the project level why because you do not see at the project level uh, uh, in this installation you won't see the organization why because this is a, not a data center installation yes. you would like to experience the data centers so i have to go to the cloud version let me show you here bitbucket dot org bit but 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 bitbucket dot org is a cloud version of bitbucket sorry not cloud I mean, yeah. it's a cloud of course cloud version of bucket but it's a data center version now you were asking me what is the difference between uh, server and data center so here you see in this bitbucket the one which i installed it you can manage only one organization by the way in the organization you can create a one only few projects i mean projects here and each projects may have a multiple repositories and all these thing whatever we discuss but if you look at the cloud version here i can manage multiple organization actually so you click on this and you see here multiple teams see here. and this is the organization basically you can say team project so here in this server version i was able to manage only one team here you see multiple teams i am able to manage so for example if you see devops daily is one team inside this i can create n number of project and inside a project i can have n number of repository so this is the you know uh, data center if you go for it you can manage the multiple organization which is not here at uh, the server level installation so you can exp you can get a free account at the cloud version of bitbucket.org and you can see also that uh, installation of uh, uh, data center uh, uh, features and you can check it out remaining features will be same but again here you have a ability to manage a multiple organization and teams which is lacking in the server version understood this yes yeah, sure uh, okay uh, yeah. so any questions so far yeah uh, i got one thing and basically uh, two questions this one is uh, you install uh, bitpacket in rhl 7.5 right you have a step by step any document or any uh, things where i can uh, do it on my own and see how it works the uh, second thing is uh, uh, do you have any exercises to uh, uh, to create a pull request and merge pull requests um uh, search for pull requests and uh, my, uh, the, the uh, creating hook and then uh, how to use it in the uh, repository anything they have exercises so i can sit and work and learn it is that it possible oh yes so installation when where is concern of the installation i have a documentation but uh, i don't know it's up to date or not bit bucket Yes, you have difficulty in uh, doing the reverse version of first you install uh, so, git and then you install yeah no so i tell you uh, so this this is the url which i had written two years before uh, yeah, yeah still this is the same it will not it will work actually there is no problem only that you have to change the url of these packages okay so this url is there anyways but 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 i am going to share these recordings by the way i am recording these sessions and in yeah. next few hours you will get these recordings also so you can get these recordings and you can do follow the recordings and do the setup and also uh, do the server setup authentication authorization projects okay. and repositories okay so that's the first thing second thing is like do you have any uh, you ask like uh, how to do the pull request patch request and all so let me ask you one thing how much comfortable you are with the get I'm, I'm okay but not that great Okay. Another trade. So what I'm going okay. to do is, yeah. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you around a few videos. Let's say eight hours of videos uh, on Git. So I would request you because Git a uh, bit bucket you will not be able to enjoy. You'll not be able to understand what is a pull, what is a fork, what is a fetch, what is the commit. If you do not understand what is a local repository, what is a central repository. all this thing you have to little bit deep dive into that so i'm going to give you this uh, videos uh, after this session i'm going to ask chandan and mantosh to add it devops school team to add it and once they will add it they will send you an email you just practice it 
and okay. uh, after that if i talk about those fetch pull merge request then it will be meaningful because i can show you those uis in 5 minutes but you will not understand in the real time how is being used actually okay okay so in order to understand you need to know git actually in and out okay no problem okay because what i so, what i did is what i did is actually is i used a source tree and i added a remote uh, um, connection to the uh, the uh, jit server and uh, i created a project in uh, source tree a repository and i uh, pushed it to the uh, jit server so that i'm able to do it and uh, when i change something um, there had issue in the uh, uh, the um, merging the uh, things so i just thought okay i thought okay let's leave it because i didn't have a, a proper uh, learning of this so i thought okay i can because i in, i thought i i can know what the branch is i know what is pull request fetch is also fetching the um, re refreshing the things onto it but uh, i thought uh, that's the main reason i asked for any if you have any access i can just follow it and uh, do along with the kit that's the main reason yeah so most of the time uh, steps you will find it all the tutorials on the github uh, sorry uh, devopschool.com but i would rather prefer go for the videos tutorial which you have out already i am going to give you the url for it and practice it again all this feature whatever you ask all these are just a matter of few minutes but yeah. once certainly you should understand that and you can understand only if you want you are strong in the git so yes, it is a very good tool but still i would request you start with to begin with use the command line because source tree is a command uh, gui tool uh, you might not understand the exact flow what is happening uh, when you are beginning in uh, uh, sure sir no but i'll i'll go yeah, i'll do it so w once i done with this and uh, then we i can uh, you will give you be providing access to do the pull request push request uh, for bit uh, packet yes yes okay no sure Okay. Any other questions which you have? I uh, will you be showing any uh, uh, the uh, webhook uh, for your repository. In our, yes, yes. Uh, All the uh, features I'll be talking about, webhooks I'll okay. be showing you. So first, whatever okay. we have covered, I would uh, say uh, just uh, do some little bit of homework. And uh, after I that, along with that. Uh, side by side, I did it. I created users. I created group. I created global permissions. Uh, I logged in with uh, and I set it up with Bitbucket. But what I did, I said I created the uh, uh, Atlassian uh, uh, server uh, through uh, marketplace community community server, and I created it. And I had a uh, key and I did all the things. So I just said, what do you teach? I meant I was also doing the user groups and permissions also. So I ran along with that. So, um, and uh, so okay, so, so okay. So you, uh, the remaining yeah. feature. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. So remaining features we will talk about tomorrow. Meanwhile, you just sure. go through the Git videos and practice it. Sure. See if it's sure. Sure. And one more thing, sir. sir sorry for that. Uh, so you will also teach me uh, how to how, what is audit logging in Bitbucket Server. How to do data recovery and backup in Bitbucket. Yes. Yes. All this was a part of the admin. Yeah, part of the admin, right? Okay. Um, and one more thing, sir. Also, just oh, sorry for that. One more thing. Just a second. just a second sir yeah please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries we will reply to them at the earliest want to study further subscribe to our paid membership to get a deep dive into each and every topic do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our devops school channel and hit the bell icon to learn more keep learning